Welcome back to Sports Book Review, everybody. I'm talking today with Dana Lane out in Las Vegas, and in the studio with me is Scott Carter. And today is the first official day of NHL regular season, and the name of this show is going to be The Puckheads. That's right, we got The Puckheads with us. I'm just going to be hosting the show, but what I want to do, and our goal, is to let our viewers know because a lot of people at this time of year, they get all caught up in betting football, college football, you know, the baseball playoffs. Well, guess what? Under the radar is NHL. It's very profitable, and I'm looking forward to throughout this series, all right, for the Puckheads, for Scott, and for Dana to teach our viewers the advantages and the angles to beat that bookie in hockey, because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, beating the bookie. Dana, first and foremost, glad to have you back. It's been a long time since I spoke with you. Uh, I got Scott Carter here, and you guys are officially named the Puckheads. <laughs> well, I, I love the name. I appreciate you asking me to be, be yeah, asking me to be part of the show. I'm only in preseason form right now, but um, we're going to get some winners out there, and there certainly is uh, opportunity early on. We don't have to wait a month into the season to win games. Okay, I've got a Absolutely. question for both of you, Scott, right off the rip. All right, with a lot of sports, me personally, sometimes I take a week to kind of watch. I evaluate. I see where things are kind of landing and, you know, who's hot, who's got the momentum, who's got early season injuries. For the both of you, do you find yourself placing bets in the first week of the season, or are you just looking for that spot, or do you just kind of kick back and wait and see what happens? That's, for me, if I could speak first, it's, I think it's a combination a little bit. I'm a little bit more tentative to start the season. Mm -hmm. you know, start off a little bit slow. Don't hit the ground running because you just don't know, right? Okay. There's a lot of injuries and a lot of new faces, a lot of new players, rookies. Sure. I mean, we can go through team by team. I'm sure we will over the videos. We'll talk about it. But what about you, Dana? How do you feel? Yeah, for me, I mean, I, I feel like I've been watching hockey for a month and a half already with the World Cup right. starting. And then, of course, you know, the preseason as well. I mean, the last week of the preseason is what I really kind of uh, put, put a lot of emphasis on, especially when you have starting goaltenders, uh, starting games. I mean, the other night we uh, personally watched Jonathan Quick. Uh, with the Kings against the Colorado Avalanche, and I got a front row seat to that, so I got a real good feel for how the, the Kings are going to approach this upcoming season. So I'm not a, I mean, like any other day, I mean, I pick my spots, I look for opportunities, mm -hmm. but um, certainly I don't shy away because it's the first day of the season. Well, speaking oh. of the Kings, they play tonight. Any thoughts about how they're going to start off against the Sharks that made it all the way to the finals last year? Yeah, I'm. I'm. This is probably my best play today. I mean, I woke up this morning. Uh, I didn't have a feel for it. Did you? Okay, good. <laughs> I went to bed last night as well. Um, I woke up uh, this morning looking at the line, thinking, okay, now I got a fair line with this. And you know, a lot of betters are jumping all over San Jose this morning. Um, uh, the wise guys plus the public is on the Sharks, and we're getting some plus 13s, even see a plus uh, 18 in some spots, which yep. seems to breed the prevalent number. So I'm going to that, – that's my best bet tonight. I like the Kings plus the uh, plus money against the San Jose Sharks on the road. Hey, Dana, this is a question actually for both of you. Now, with, with the Kings playing at San Jose, uh, do, you, do you feel that maybe San Jose might have a little hangover from last year and also some disappointment in the result, even though they gave it their all? Do you find them coming out, you know, a little bit tired as opposed to, you know, revenge on their mind, no matter who it's against? I don't know about tired. I think in any sport, when you have the finalist or the Stanley Cup champion or the champion from the year before, you'll find that other teams want to kind of see how they compare to the, those sure, championship teams. It's a good teams, gauge. Right? It's, it's a good, it's a good measuring where you are. So they're going to come out. and Well, let, yeah. let me clarify my statement on the tired, because this year we had the World Cup of Hockey, all right, and then right after that you had preseason kicking off. All right, there are some guys that play depending on the lineup and from what teams they came from, but there's got to be some guys a little bit tired. My concern with San Jose is when you have disappointment on top of a longer schedule than usual, okay, that sometimes is a recipe for disaster. So I just wanted your thoughts on that. And with that being said, said, Kings and San Jose, uh, let's get your picks for, for that game if you both have a pick on that game. Well, we already know Dana's pick, right? I'm, I'm on the fence on that one. I'm, uh -oh. I'm kind of looking. Uh -oh. Don't start this on the fence in the first week. I'm not yet. on the I'm fence you. necessarily, but it's a tough game. I mean, it's the first game of the year, and for every good reason, um, Dana said, especially watching Quick Live and that, you know, coming out against the former or uh, the previous team that made it to the finals. Yeah, um, LA is a good spot to pick them. I like to take the team with you. You get plus money. It's yeah. what was the plus money, Dana? What did you get that at? 
Uh, the best that I saw was actually plus 130, but that's not the prevalent number. It's right around plus 118 or so, so that's what we got it at. Okay, plus 118, and of course, that was on the SBR odds page, right? Yes, sir. Fantastic. All right, moving along, Toronto at Ottawa. Uh, from what I'm hearing, Toronto's loaded with, with a lot of rookies, a lot of you know guys that are just you know getting their feet wet in this uh, at the professional level. Toronto at Ottawa, and it seems opening line standard is about minus 130 with a total of five and a half. All right, we'll start with you, Dana. What's your breakdown? What's your thoughts on Toronto at Ottawa? <laughs> Yeah, I won't make an official play on this, but certainly will be Ottawa or nothing for me. I mean, let's not forget uh, last year that uh, that Anderson faced more shots than any other goaltender except Henrik Lundqvist, so that has to change. And this is a scenario where I'm going to have to watch Ottawa and see if they're just better than last year. And let's not forget, you know, betters are all over Toronto. I even saw 135. It looks like the number's going up because betters are a little bit blinded by Austin Matthews. They're a little bit blinded by the fact that uh, Mitch Marner will also make his debut for Toronto. So naturally, you know, that's that's enough for betters to get on the the, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, who they want to root for because they think that these two are going to be superstars. Uh, for me, it's a wait and see on both of these teams. Uh, I love Guy Boucher and what he's doing in Ottawa, I think his uh, implementation of a more defensive style uh, is yep. going to be best for them. And let's see how that style affects Eric, Eric Carlson, who is you know used to getting up in the play pretty consistently. Wow, I like that breakdown. Scott it, it, Carter, it, it, what's your thoughts on well, this he, game? He said it perfectly. I mean, he basically read my notes. But yeah, Carlson's going to be the one that's going to have to adapt a little bit to that new style. You're right. Having Crawford, Mark Crawford, as help, helping them out as well is going to be huge factor. Um, getting uh, Brassard from the Rangers is going to be a huge um, upgrade from them on forward. He's going to be their number one center probably as well. But you're right. They got six rookies starting. Austin Matthews, I mean, he's going to be the rookie of the year, right? There's no doubt about it, right? Unless he gets injured, he's going to be the rookie of the year. So they're going to be better. They're going to be faster, younger. Um, it's going to take a while. I, I love the... Um, I love. I got him at one thirty this morning. So okay, so this is one of your picks. This is one of Who my picks. I'm with? taking Ottawa at one thirty for sure. On this Ottawa game. minus one thirty. Okay. All right, yeah, Scotty. That's my pick. All right, and again, this is a short slate. There's only four games opening day. St. Louis is at the Chicago Blackhawks. Boy, I'm looking forward to this one. Dana, we'll start with you. Break it down, my man. And is there anything interesting in this game that you think could be a ticket casher? Yeah, I mean, these are. this is certainly a game. It's kind of, let's see what we got here. I mean, this is almost like Christmas where all the teams are wrapped in a box and you don't know what's inside yet until you watch <laughs> them play. But uh, the fact of the matter is that Chicago does have depth, uh, although that they certainly have turned the soil over again this this last off season, but there is depth on the blue line. And uh, I certainly want to see what both of these teams are going to bring to the table. I mean, I, you know, let's not forget, I mean, this is going to be Ken Hitchcock's last year in St. Louis, and we know that he had some issues with Tarasenko last year in the playoffs. Let's see if the residue of that continues. And, you know, again, it's just one of these games. Let's sit back and see what we have, and I really don't have an opinion either way on it. Okay, and sometimes that's the best bet, you know, uh, more than, you know, just kind of stretching and reaching and forcing something. Scotty, what's your thoughts on this St. Louis Blue Chicago Blackhawks? Again, it's one of those early games of the year where there's two quality teams that could be definitely in the running for the Cup. Uh, at the you know when we come around springtime, I like the I like to see the Hawks. I'm I'm taking the Hawks to start off the season with a big win, minus one thirty. Okay, so you're going. With I'm it. taking the Hawks to go to the finals against Montreal. That's my kind of pick for the year. Uh, well, with that being said, did you put a futures bet in them on that? And if you did, what no. what did you catch it at? No, no? I, didn't, I didn't put a futures bet on it. I'm, I'm not okay. I'm not the type of guy who likes to put tie a lot of money, money yeah, over I, I, for I'd the like year. That. But respectful. I think uh, Montreal is going to come back, and I don't I know they're not playing tonight. But I like them tomorrow in Buffalo. Buffalo's got a lot of injuries. Okay, Just, but tonight you like Chicago. I like Chicago. Take saying. Chicago. Chicago Lay in and Ottawa. Yep. All right, yep. that's pick number two. Pick all number right, two. and the last game, all right, is Calgary at Edmonton. Is there any edge or advantage either in a total or a side in this one, Dana? Yeah, my my only official pick tonight is going to be L.A., but in this one it's going to be Edmonton or nothing. And uh, I, I really like Glenn Gullitson. I like the culture change in Calgary. I think it's a... Uh, it's the contrast that they needed from what Bob Hartley brought to the table last year. Glenn Gullitson's won every year, uh, every place he's been, including Las Vegas. Uh, but again, let's let's see exactly how Brian Elliott is going to fit in with Calgary. Um, 
you know, McDavid, is he going to be able to stay healthy? I mean, uh, if, if before he got hurt with the collarbone injury, or after he got hurt with the collarbone injury, he's probably one of the top two, three players in the league. Uh, again, it's, a, it's kind of a let's see what we have type situation, but uh, certainly it would be Edmonton. Uh, minus a dollar twenty or nothing, and I love. I, I think one of the things that Edmonton's done that nobody's talking about is the acquisition of Milan Lucic. Uh, I think huge. is absolutely huge. Yeah. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of him, yeah, and I think too. he brings added. Uh, I think he brings uh, immediate heart to your team. And you saw in Boston when he left, uh, what Boston was kind of left with, and and that was a lack of heart. Wow. Wow. Very well said. Scotty, do you have any call on this game? It's not often when you get a guy that was, he was on your Kings last year, right? Lucic went from Boston to LA. It's not very often where a player says, I want to go to Edmonton. You know, that's what he said. He wants to go to Edmonton. And when they give an offer sheet, so he's going to fit in really well with the Connor McDavid line for sure. Uh, He's probably going to fit in real well with the fans, too, because they got to love that. They got to love that. Great new stadium. They say it's the best arena in all of sports as far as for hockey goes, uh, Rogers. That's because they haven't been to Los Angeles. I was just going to say that. You (laughs) stole the words out of my mouth because Dana Lane has been working extremely hard on promoting and pushing and getting hockey there. And that new uh, arena is amazing. My nephew lives out there, and he said the same thing. So I'm glad you brought that up, Dana. We're not going to let this guy hammer us. Well, no, I, 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 the, the ice between the two, in all fairness, yep. the ice is very similar. And, and you talk to players after, after Frozen Fury this past weekend, and, and to a man, they will tell you it's as good of an ice surface as they've played on. Really? That's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. interesting. Well, do, big you have a, do you have a pick on this game, Scotty? I hope not, because you told me you were going to take it easy this week. You're yeah. starting to sound like Pistol no, I've already got two picks. If I took any pick, I would take the over on that one. Okay. Like, but like Dana said, yeah. Elliot. Uh, that's a he's that's a big signing for them. Sure. You know, goal training sure. has always been the problem for that yeah. team, Calgary, and uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a couple of okay. days to see these two okay. teams how they uh, yeah. with all the different acquisitions, and okay. I think it's going to be interesting to give them a few days before. Yeah. We and again, it's a four game slate tonight, but yeah. we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about the Pittsburgh Penguins. Okay, this is the you know defending champs. Do either of you two see this team uh, with enough talent, with enough depth, and with enough hunger to come back and say, let's get another one and win back to back Stanley Cups? Well, Crosby's well, injured, right? Concussion, right? So he, we don't know when he's going to be playing. Okay. That could be a huge factor. Um, sure, why not? I mean, anything could happen. It's a long season. 82 games is a long but way you, to go. Do you think this team has what, you know, are they built to go as far as let's repeat? That what, that meant nothing? Or is this team, you know, like some teams, they just, you know, their, their thirst gets quenched. No, no. They're, uh, Crosby's a, a Canadian kid who's got the heart and the passion. He definitely wants another cup. Yeah, um, and with you know, him injured, though, third, that's huge. Third concussion and, uh, ooh, ooh, you know, ooh. it's... Yeah. You know, we've got to wait a little bit. What do you think, Dana? Uh, for me, if, if Sidney Crosby isn't 100%, that's huge for Pittsburgh. And, and even if he is 100%, I, I'm so anti-champion of the previous season. I just I completely stay away from them when we're talking about uh, we're talking about betting on them to win the Stanley Cup. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I would not bet on Pittsburgh anyway just because of what you mentioned, Mike. I mean, there's this internal desire that just kind of leaves you after winning mm-hmm. the Stanley Cup. And that doesn't happen for everybody. But if you look at past champions, I mean, if you take the Montreal Canadiens out of the equation, mm-hmm. I mean, past champions have not fared well uh, as, as far as actually winning the Cup the next year. And let's also remember, you know, this, the expansion is coming up in June. So a lot of teams are going to have to make some choices early. We already saw Pittsburgh pick up Mike Condon right. uh, yesterday, and so they're going to have to make a choice between uh, between their goaltending situation exactly. there because they have to leave one unprotected. Yeah, so, yeah. every uh, team has to. Leave, that's a great point. Every team has to leave one goaltender unprotected at the end of the year, expansion. right? For that expansion. Ah, uh, yeah, similar and, what they did. Another doing. another a good point we can uh, talk about real quickly. I just thought heard about it yesterday. Is that the last time no Canadian teams made the playoffs? was 1970. The next year, Montreal Canadiens won the Stanley Cup. Wow, that's so interesting. You might want to look out for I that. I picked the Canadians to go to the Stanley Cup this year. I'm not saying they're going to win it, yeah. but well, I think there's going to be a couple of Canadian teams. Back you know, Dana and I, we both did have one thing. We both think Vancouver Canucks be lucky to win 10 games this year. Are you still thinking <laughs> that? Well, I'm just kidding. I'm, I, hey, when you see the video, this guy's sporting a Vancouver Canucks shirt, and I'm just giving him a hard time. <laughs> He's a good guy, but that's his team. So it should I be know, rough year for the Canucks. You know, should be a rough year, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, well, we'll my see. Flyers, I have not a whole lot to talk about, so I'll just leave it for now. 
injuries. But yeah, we place. do. But you know what? We do have a future. I think it's going to be good. All right, viewers, you heard it. This is our first show. All right. And just stay with us as we continue to educate you on the advantages and the angles to cash those tickets in NHL. Stay tuned for the Puckheads every Wednesday and every Saturday. Dana, great to have you on. Let's pick up momentum and let's start out out of the gate with uh, giving some winners and also letting our viewers know we know our hockey. Scotty and Dana, thank to both of you. Cheers. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Scott. See you. Go to SBRodds.com. Browse, compare, and shop live odds available at top 